right into it with Coach Calipari. As always, use that uh, raised hands feature, and we'll get uh, get your questions to you. Let's go ahead. Jerry, we'll start with you. Yeah, John, I wonder what what you say to the team. How concerned are you about discouragement after something like this? I need someone to talk to me because I'm discouraged. What I just saw, the way we finished the game, the shot selection at the end, missed free throws, turnovers, just throw the ball to them for layups. We gave them 20 points on turnovers, throwing them the ball. I'm discouraged. And again, we get beat to every tough ball. We got one ball in front of our bench Devin dies for. Rest of them, we don't get any. And so what happens is, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we just got to keep trying to figure out and try to help them. But if they don't understand the importance of toughness, I mean, the bat last basket number four got ran down and just caught it and laid it in. Just lay it in. And then the last play, we were telling you can't get screened on this. Fight your butt. Fight. One guy got screened. And then they got it in. He fumbled it. And no one blocked it. We just gave him a layup. Come on. I mean, this is all stuff that's, uh, we got to be better. You know, our, our guard play was awful. BJ showed some life. The rest of the guard play was not good at all. I mean, you know, we're, you, you try to open up the court a little bit, can't get by anybody, end up taking a bad shot. So, I mean, we got, we got our hands full, but you know what? I'm not giving up on them. I'm just, I'm, you could tell right now this is this is one and 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 they did I mean we should have won the game we're up six we got the ball I mean come on but you, you got to give credit to Georgia they never stop we missed two free throws they get their chance he didn't even call a timeout which I wouldn't do either and then they get it on the baseline because again we didn't come up with the ball Larry we'll go to you and then John Hale John, what worries you more about this team? The lack of what seems to be physical toughness or the lack of mental toughness at key times? It's both. I'm telling guys, if you don't shoot it, I'm taking you out. And again, we had guys in roles that they were comfortable with. Now you put them in other roles, you see they're not as comfortable. This is why I always say, I know my team. I'm with them every day. I know who they are. I know when they're going to play their best when they're in certain roles and you start putting guys and doing stuff, I'll tell you, it woke up BJ, made him sit, sit. But then one of the other guards was so bad. I had to start him in the second half. John Hale, we'll go to you then Kent. Cal, your teams usually get so much better during this break between the two semesters, Camp Cal, whatever you want to call it. Now that you're, back in classes and you have less practice time, how do you fix the issues moving ahead? It may be, it may be good that we have less time on the court, you know, but again, I'm, what I keep saying is these kids are respectful. They listen. They just don't hear. I mean, every one handed rebound, do you guys understand every day we're working on two handed rebounds every day, not like every other day, every day. Sometimes we're doing it in the morning and evening. Two-handed rebound. You know how many we went after with one? The last one we got, the guy went after it with one hand. And we got lucky it was on the floor and we were able to pick it up. I mean, all that kind of stuff is, is just, you don't want to lose because of that. You don't block out on a free throw. Really? Really? Um, you know, you break off an offense. You're supposed to go screen the ball. You don't really screen and the guy doesn't come off. So now it's one-on-one. -on -one. We can't play that way. We can't get the ball by anybody. We're not that kind of team. So now we end up having a tough shot. We go in, you, now you're begging for fouls. But like I said, you know what? You could tell of my frustration right now, but um, I'm the coach of the team. And I got a job to do. We got to figure out how we're going to win games. And that's all it is. Can't go ahead. Then John Clack. Yeah, 
John, the other day you talked about combinations, but how maddening is it to go game to game and really within the game, you don't know who's going to show up and who's not going to show up. And like not tonight you had about a handful of guys. Not show up. They're, they're there and ready. It's mentally, if something goes wrong, and that's why I like guys when they're coming off the bench and whatever they do is good. When you start doing different things, all of a sudden you look and say, wow, maybe he shouldn't. But that's, I know, and, and you're right, the consistency of these players, it's made it hard. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you can't, I told the staff, I'd like to be playing six or seven guys right now, and that's it. The problem is, who would they be? And now you're trying to play nine or t you can't play nine or ten. Why are we playing that many? Because you don't know who's going to play well. There you go. Who's going to be rough? Who's going to make that play? Who's going to come up with that rebound? Who's not going to break down defensively? And a lot of it is based on if I'm not doing well offensively, all that other stuff slips. And I keep coming back to the easiest thing is forget about all that and do the stuff that doesn't take skill because maybe you're not real skilled. So do the stuff that doesn't take skill or ready for this word, talent. Do all the things that don't take skill and talent and go hard. And now you start building your own confidence. And I told him, fall back on the training. I told him before the game, we even said as coaches, I don't care what they shoot. I'm not saying anything. Let them shoot. Let them see if they can get going. And I'm looking around saying, oh, my gosh. I know we're not as bad as we played. Give Georgia credit. I do not want to take away from their win. That was a good win for them. Um, we're not as bad as we played, but you know what? We better start playing better. It's gonna, it ain't getting any easier. These, every game we're playing from here on in, really hard. So we're going to have to step on the gas. Guys, we'll go John and Kyle and see we're out on time. John, obviously, Devin had a rough night. How, how do you handle that moving forward with him? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel bad for him. And, and I even told him, I'm putting you in this play because I believe in you. And, and that last free throw, I know, crushed him. And that wasn't the game. The game, we had a turnover through the head. It was thrown back to him. The guy gets a breakaway layup on a transition basket. Number four, no one picked him up and they throw it under the basket. Are you kidding me? With a minute to go in the game? How does that happen? But you know, and you watched, he didn't play great. And, uh, but we got to, you know, I, I believe in him. This stuff is hard. Um, you know, I don't, all, all I keep coming back to, again, play to the training. Um, and again, here's how I want Devin to play so you all know. I don't want him to have a lot of dribbles. I want him to come down, get it up, and get away from the ball. The reason I like that is away from the ball, he can make plays. And he can make shots on the ball where everybody's watching him. He's not effective. He's just not. If we put him in pick and rolls, get rid of the ball. If you have a layup, take it. But if there, you can't come off thinking I'm trying to score because then you add two dribbles to everything. And so you understand what I've been saying and talking, less dribbles, get rid of the ball, go away from the ball. And when it comes to you, make plays. Um, but again, you know, it's... Uh, He's a respectful kid. He's just, I don't know if he's hearing what we're trying to get him to do, but he will. I mean, he's not, these kids are good kids. This is a struggle. You know, we needed to break through for this game and we didn't. So what do we do? Now we go on to the next game. We got to practice tomorrow. We got to practice on Friday and we take, play a really good LSU team at home with no fans. So there were no fans here today though either. Kyle, go ahead. Cal, you've talked so much about toughness. Um, you've talked some about sort of the balance of how hard you can go on these guys compared to how hard you normally would for sort of worrying about breaking them down. Um, you know, Kenny Payne was a guy that instilled a lot of toughness. He was a guy that maybe played good cop to your bad cop, put his arm around those guys after you pushed them really hard. You feel like you've missed that? Have you missed him to some degree this season? His my, presence? My, my staff is doing it, believe me. They're there. They're Every day with these guys, they go to the, the lodge and check them out. They do extra work. 
Kenny was great at what he does, but we got guys here doing the same. So do we miss him? I miss him because I love him. He's like a brother, but we have guys doing that. Um, if you think that anybody could change like guys games or their abilities, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not sure there's there, you know, there's one guy that could do that, but we're, we're, believe me, we're taking time and I'm spending extra time with these kids, but you know, it kind of adds up. You're at Kentucky. This isn't easy. You start losing, everybody has an answer. Not only that, they try to move guys in and do different things. And now all of a sudden you screw up a couple. I, I am trying to do everything I can to help everyone play their best. They got to hear what we're saying on the toughness and the mental toughness, make those plays. And I think we will. So we go on to the next folks. Peace.